In the previous section, we showed that graph filters are transferable across graphs that are drawn from a common grouping. There are several important remarks that follow from this theorem, which we cover in this section. Let's pay homage to Dr. Seuss and point out that we have three things in this bound. Thing one is a term that comes from the discretization of the Griffon signal. It is not very important, in the sense that it is something we should have had expected to appear and that it has the effect we should have had expected it to have. Graphon signals that vary more rapidly are more difficult to approximate with their samples. Thing two is a term coming from the filter's variability at eigenvalues with absolute value larger than c. This is the part of the bound that is associated with the components for which the convergence is quote-unquote easy, by which we mean the eigenvalues are, that are not excessively close to other eigenvalues. This is the part of the bound that is most interesting and whose derivation is most difficult. It gives a clear picture of what is the error incurred in these frequency components when we move from one graph to another. This is the inherent transferability error of the filter. Thing three is a term that comes from the filter's variability at eigenvalues with absolute values smaller than c. This is the part of the bound that is associated with the components for which convergence is quote unquote difficult by which we mean the eigenvalues that are very close to other eigenvalues because they are clustered at lambda equal to zero. This is a part of the error that is a sort of residual error. There are analysis leftovers coming from the frequency components that are difficult to tell apart. It is, nevertheless, a part of the bound that is fundamental. It characterizes a part of the spectral representation that it is impossible to transfer from one graph to another. Thing two and thing three are, therefore, inherently different. Thing two characterizes the error in the part of the spectrum that can be transferred from one graph to the other. Thing three is the error associated with the part of the spectrum that we can't transfer from one graph to the other. Continuing with our parsing of the transferability theorem, the next point to emphasize is that all filters are transferable in the limit. Indeed, as we let n and m grow, most of the transferability error decreases and eventually vanishes. This decrease is proportional to the number of nodes in the smaller graph, which is the one that dominates asymptotically. There is a residual error term that does not vanish. This is associated with the part of the spectrum clustered around lambda equal to zero, the part of the spectrum that we can't transfer from one graph to another. It is interesting, however, that for larger graphs, we can also afford a higher C, this is because larger n and m compensate for large c band cardinalities and smaller c eigenvalue margins. If we decrease the bandwidth c, the c band cardinalities grow and the c eigenvalue margins decrease, but they are canceled out by the larger number of nodes in the graph. We can thus reduce the less term, the residual error associated with small eigenvalues, because we can cancel out the resulting increase of the c band cardinalities and the resulting decrease of C eigenvalue margins. It is also interesting to point out that larger number of nodes also compensates for increasing Lipschitz constant in the filter's frequency responses. This allows for using sharper filters in larger graphs. We can transfer more discriminative filters when the graph grows larger. The rate of change of the graphon, the graphon signals, has an effect on the bound. This is captured by the Lipschitz constants of the graphon and the graphon signal. The effect is rather straightforward. Graph signals and graphons with larger variability make filter transference more difficult. This is because of a sampling approximation error. It is not a fundamental aspect of the story. We remark that this constant can be sharpened if we introduce Lipschitz constants model permutation. But since this part of the error is not fundamental, the exercise is rather pointless. The most important feature of the transferability bound is the effect of filter discriminability. This is captured by the Lipschitz constant of the filter's frequency response whose growth produces a concomitant linear rise on the value of the transferability bound. Thus, filters that are more discriminative are more difficult to transfer. It is interesting to point out that this is true in the part of the bound related to the components that can be transferred, those that are associated with eigenvalues that have absolute value larger than C. 
And it is also true of the part of the bound that corresponds to components that cannot be transferred. Those that are associated with eigenvalues that have absolute values smaller than C. A reduction on the Lipschitz constant L2 reduces both of these terms. The error in the part of the filter that can be transferred decreases, and the error in the part of the filter that cannot be transferred decreases as well. A feature of the transferability bound that is a close second in terms of importance is the effect of the spectral properties of the Griffon. A first important point to make is that the bound is parametric on the bandwidth C. Different choices of C result in different values for the bound. There is a value of C that makes this bound smallest. This is because the term L2C decreases with C, but the ratio of the band cardinality and the eigenvalue margin increases with C. The second important point is that increases in the C band cardinality or decreases in the C eigenvalue margin results in more challenging transferability. This is something that should be expected. When the C band cardinality increases, there are more components to transfer. When the eigenvalue margin decreases, the eigenvectors are more difficult to separate. A final point to make is that although we can write the C band cardinality and the C eigenvalue margin as properties of the graphs, they are properties of the Graphon in the limit. This is because the graph eigenvalues converge to the Graphon eigenvalues as we grow the size of the graphs. The reason why this effect is second in importance is that, is, is that it, it is not under our control. The Graphon is what it is, and it is, its spectral properties are what they are. This is different from the effect of the filter's discriminability, which is something that we can control. It is gratifying to see our discriminability analysis bringing us to a familiar point, the emergence of a non-trade-off. Indeed, if we fix N and M in the transferability bound, we see that transferability and discriminability are incompatible. For us to be able to discriminate frequency components around lambda equal to zero, we need to have a large Lipschitz constant L2. This is because eigenvalues cluster around lambda equal to zero. We need sharp filters. But making L2 large renders the transferability bound useless. We can't claim transferability if the Lipschitz constant of the filter's frequency response is large. The solution of this dilemma also brings us to a familiar place, the introduction of graph neural networks.